free sulfur machine. And I'm actually going to run a test right now on the red wine. And this just gives me a very good, it's a very good indication of how much um, free sulfur is in the wine. And if there's not enough, then we need to add more. Okay, this solution mm -hmm. will turn purple when there's sulfur present in the sample. And if there's no sulfur, you have zero parts per million sulfur, it will stay green like it is now. Once the solution is turned purple um, and the test is finished, then we just titrate with a acid solution in order to back to green in order to see how much sulfur is actually in the wine. Mm. There's a special calculation to figure that out. We'll just run this for two minutes, and there it goes. And so you'll see that this will turn purple after a, couple, a few seconds. Very mad scientist. Yeah. The AccuFlow 5000. <laughs> see, when I'm kind of back on mm -hmm. Yeah, so I yeah, can start to turning. see changing color. Yeah. It'll get to a pretty dark purple. The darker the the purple, mm -hmm. the more free sulfur you have in your sample. And so at Deerfield, you know, we're trying to get as little sulfur as possible. But during the when we're actually aging the mm -hmm. wine, you want to keep, you know, thirty-five parts per million present in your wine because if you have very little sulfur in your wine then bacteria mm -hmm. will take over that, and it will but, faster mm -hmm. but uh, yeah because that sulfur traps the oxygen mm -hmm. and you know the bacteria feeds metabolizes off that oxygen so the trick is to have a little bit of sulfur present during the aging of the wine but then by the time it's bottled mm -hmm. you want it to all mm -hmm. we have a lower up. we have a lower amount and then um, you know, the sulfur will dissipate in bottle. And by the time we release, it will be at an acceptable level. Do you want to talk a little bit for a second about SO3? Um, I mean, a, a, a sulfur dioxide and how it mm -hmm. is converted to SO3 and how it's... I mean, I don't know how much... All I know is that I'm not a chemistry major. <laughs> so when the SO2 is put into the wine, it comes into contact with oxygen molecules. Mm -hmm. And um, that the sulfur then... It, I think becomes inert and we understand it mm -hmm. so that you know you're not just drinking pure SO2 it becomes SO3 and it's so it's just um so what I'm thinking of I guess yeah inert inert because that sulfur Balance dioxide out. is some pretty nasty yeah I mean stuff. in its pure form before you when you're pouring it into a tank or barrel it's really noxious mm -hmm. to breathe, to touch. Obviously, don't drink it. It's oh, really it's, stupid. It's horrible stuff. Burns your eyes. You have to wear a mask. It's really. Um, and that to me is what's amazing how um, it uh, it becomes something that's completely mm -hmm. inert, mm -hmm. tasteless, odorless, mm -hmm. non toxic. Yeah, if there's too much in a wine, then you know you can taste it, mm -hmm. and it will give you a headache because it is. I mean, that will be the free sulfur that's hanging out is mm -hmm. SO2 that hasn't been combined. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not inert. That free sulfur is not inert. And so often, um, you know, in an attempt to make sure that they don't lose any wine, that <laughs> they're walking, <laughs> in an attempt to make sure that they don't lose any wine or it doesn't, um, or, you know, it doesn't get any moldy or any mm -hmm. bacteria grows, uh, people will put in too much sulfur dioxide, like an overkill, mm -hmm. because they don't want to lose anything. Mm -hmm. And you have to be careful about putting too much SO2 in your wine, especially with the lighter wines like Pinot, because mm -hmm. SO2 does bleach your mm -hmm. wine, so it can strip color. Okay. It's definitely not what you want with a Pinot, because it is so light to begin with. Okay. So I, I didn't know that uh, yeah, it had that a, effect yeah, it strips on the raisin. So how, okay. long, how long does this test This will go for like another eight minutes, so we can, okay. I can show you the other. Yeah, let's check something else out while this is going. Okay. And you run multiple, to, obviously you find the pH of the wine, mm -hmm. but also we use it to find the total acidity in the wine, uh, to test ammonia levels, and that's about it, what I do with this. And this is the probe that goes into the wine, and then this machine tells me what the pH is. Mm -hmm. And usually you will have a pH between like 3.3 .3 
and 4.1 for our aging wine. And that's where you want it? Um, I mean, lately grapes have just been coming in with a higher pH, which means they're more basic. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you want a, a wine that is more acidic than basic mm -hmm. because that gives it a brighter flavor, it lifts the wine's flavor, and also having a more acidic wine will protect it against bacteria growth because bacteria doesn't uh, fare very well in acidic environments. Mm -hmm. So if you have a really basic wine, you have to watch the BA because um, bacteria grows well in basic solutions. And is that uh, affected by the soil composition of the vineyard? Uh, I think so. That'd be more something for Robert, mm -hmm. but he said that it seems like just the way the soil has changed over the last few years, he's seen um, higher pH on grapes that have come in 